You are so good. In the world, you are the king of kings on earth. You are ruling on the earth. You are the man of war. Jehovah, you are glorious. Hello, everyone. I want to share a story with you. I believe you have heard of someone called Smith Wigglesworth, right? I want to tell you a story about his wife. I want to tell you a story about his wife. So, Years back, you know, he his wife was originally the person who would preach and then he would take care of the children. And he said whenever she she will preach and she'll come down from the pulpit, she'll tell him that the presence of God was so strong while she was preaching. It was literally like heaven came down. That the way things are looking, she will go to heaven one day from after preaching. And so one time he had the administration, so we had to go like an outside administration. Why she will minister in their mission house where like their own ministry. So he said his goodbyes and he left. He was there and he found out. He was there and he found out that he was he got an information. He was told that his his wife had passed on, she had died. He went back to base and you know the first question he asked was how did she die what were the circumstances surrounding her death and they told him that as soon as she had finished preaching as soon as she finished preaching she came down from the from the pulpit and she was heading to the back to the door of the church at the back while walking from the pulpit like this down to the back she slumped and died and as soon as he heard it, he was like, ah, that's exactly what she said. That's what she said. That was what, like, literally, this is how her going home will be. She will just come down from the pulpit, like, from the pulpit to heaven. And that's how it happened. He was laid upstairs, and he went to see her. He saw her lying down, lifeless, dead. And immediately he commanded death to take his hands off her. And she came back to life. The reason I'm laughing is that I shared this story with one of my sisters and she said, oh, she, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Different levels of grace. Called her back to life. And she opened her eyes. And he's like, you're my everything. Where are you going? Like, where are you going to? And she smiled and she told him like, heaven is Heaven is even much more beautiful than we talk about. And, you know, he didn't want her to die back. Like, he just wanted her to stay. And he said clearly, he heard the Holy Spirit say to him, at time, her work is over. Let her come home. And he released her and told her she could go. And so she closed her eyes and died finally. And he said he did not cry. He was rather laughing in the spirit and praying, you know, speaking in tongues and laughing in the spirit. And when I read it, let me tell you what happened. As soon as I read this, I just dropped the book. I'm like, what is this one talking about? Any believer whose loved one is in heaven. And he's crying and yeah, and he's crying and crying and crying and you know cannot be comforted. He said that believer do not have the revelation of what Paul shared when he said that the believer is not dead but he's sleeping because he's alive in another realm. He said that believer that is crying, you know, and cannot be consoled does not have an understanding of does not have a revelation of 
um, what Paul shared in the Bible, in the book of Corinthians. And I think he also mentioned it in Thessalonians, talking about the believer who is sleeping, who even though he's dead, is actually sleeping. And I just, like this story I told you, <laughs> I just kept thinking about it like, wow, wow, wow. So today is the 9th of April. Today is an anniversary of my mom's home going, are going to heaven. And I remember, I woke up today thinking about her and I remember she used to say something. Sometimes when we used to have conversations, like if I told her this kind of story now, I used to tell her this kind of stories. If I, the times I'll tell her stories like this and she'll be like, ah. sometimes she'll tell me, sometimes I wonder how this heaven is because when I'm hearing all these stories, I'll be like, ah, this heaven, this heaven, how glorious will it be? So I woke up today thinking about her and I was saying to myself, this heaven, she always wondered and she'll say, ah, this heaven, I wonder, I just wonder how this heaven will be. She's finally in that heaven and she's, she must be having the time of her life because this is what she always wanted to be with the Lord. To be with the father at the end of her life. In in um in retrospect, I shared these stories and I told you all of this to tell you that there's a level one can walk with God. There's a level of intimacy that one can have with the Lord. That his life literally will be heaven on earth. Because you'll be experiencing the glory of God while on earth. I don't know about you. I'm sure you want that. For me, that's the kind of life I want to live. That's the kind of testimony I want to have. That's the kind of um, that's the kind of heaven on earth life. And if you read the book of Proverbs, book of Proverbs say, wisdom stand at the street. And wisdom is calling to people. Let me tell you one last story. There's this woman that when we are growing up, when we go to church, you know back at home when we go to church she will say if the pastor is preaching and the pastor say something you know how pastors say a word the thing will just sound like rema when pastor says a word and it doesn't sound like rema the woman will just shout hey wisdom is crying <laughs> that this this phrase it never left us in my house my siblings and i if you say something that makes sense somebody will just say mm, wisdom is crying <laughs> wisdom is crying so this story I just told you is just say, ah, wisdom is crying. Mm, mm, wisdom is crying. I'm saying these stories, why I'm telling you all of these stories is to tell you that you can decide the kind of life you want. You can decide the quality of life you want to have. Now that I have a home, you know, I'm married with my own children. I think about my mom, I'm like, oh my goodness. There's nothing we will do that she will not catch us. Not like we tell her, but the Holy Spirit to tell her when she's praying. Like one of my sisters, she will say, she went, when the university, she went to visit a boy. And the guy was checking her, you know, he was asking her out, wanted her to be his girlfriend. And so she went to his house. And she's in his house and my mom calls her on the phone. My mom is like, where are you? She's like, I'm out. I mean, I'm not in my house. Why are you calling? I mean, what happened? She's like, where are you? She's like, I'm out. Where exactly are you? Please, I'm out. And my mom goes, I just stood up from the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit is telling me that there's something you want to do with a man. And she was in the guy's house and the guy was ready, you know, <laughs> giving his vibes and his words. My sister went, oh my God, this woman. And my mom said, I don't know what you are up to, but I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit is watching you and he has a plan for your life. Ah, my sister, her morale just died. She just told the guy, it's like, I'll be going. Mm -mm. It's like, I'll just be going. This, <laughs> I'm here. Holy Spirit is reporting me to my mother. Let me just be going. Now that I'm married, I'm like, oh my goodness, what sensitivity. If I don't read my Bible in the university, my mother will call me. If I if I forget to read my Bible like two, three days, my mother will just call me out of the blues and she'll say, how is your Bible study life? I'm like, I read in my mind, I'm like, I know, I know this one will pick it if I don't read my Bible. And she'll go, you know, I was praying for you and the Lord is showing me that you're not spending time with the word. I'm like, mommy, please stop. Every time you come, it's like you want to tell me something I'm already doing wrong. I'm telling you these stories again to tell you that you can attain such sensitivity with the Holy Spirit that nothing goes, nothing like literally goes 
doesn't pass you. You don't need to be doing CEO, CIA, CEE, COO of the investigator, of the crime investigator, because the Holy Spirit will just tell you, like, straight up. So I want us to pray. We're not going to pray for too long today, just a few minutes, and I want it to be productive. That's why I engaged you with all of these stories. So I just wanted to just worship the Lord. Say, Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege to call on you. Thank you because you have a plan for me. Thank you because you have a purpose for me. Thank you because there's a reason why you give me a home. There's a reason why you give me my home, my marriage, my family. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I don't take it for granted. I can never repay you, but from my heart. I've come to say that I thank you, thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you have given me. I can never repay you, but from my heart. I've come to say that I thank you. Let's worship the Lord for the gift of life, for his faithfulness, for his loving kindness, for his goodness, for his tender mercies. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you honor and adoration. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord, I give you all the grace. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. I want to share this scripture. And this scripture is a word from God to someone. In the book of Psalm 40, verse 3, the Bible says, And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You woke up this morning with a new song. It's not a song you know. It's not a song you've ever heard from anywhere. But you just woke up and you found yourself singing a new song. This word is for you this evening. So, Psalms 40 verse 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He didn't say many shall hear. You know when you talk about song, people talk about hearing, hearing the song. God does not make mistake with tenses. He said, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. The reason why many will see it and fear is that song that God has put in your mouth. When there's going to be a manifestation of the wordings of that song that you find yourself declaring, many people will see it. They will fear and they shall trust in the Lord. I want to give a word also to somebody who has been going through a, a period of turmoil and I used turmoil, I did not use the word suffering, even though that's the word you will use. Psalm 40, verse 2. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. I want you to know this, that God will bring you out of that horrible pit. God will bring you out of the miry clay. And God will set your feet upon a rock. God will establish your goings. Doesn't, when you look at your, with your physical eyes, you don't see how. But how shouldn't be your problem. It's about that God will do it. If you have a journal, write today's date down. Put this verse in your journal. Because when there's a manifestation, remember to go back to this verse and say, God said it before he did it. I want you to worship the Lord and say, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. I give you glory. I give you praise. Oh, I thank you. They that wait on the Lord, they will not be ashamed. Lord, I give you all the glory and all the praise. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I appreciate you. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you everything I have, lifting my hands and voice before you. I give you glory. I give you honor. 
I give you everything I have, lifting my hands and voice before you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for looking out for me. Thank you for having my best interest at heart. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. It's not because of who I am. It's not because of what I have done. It is because you are a God of love. I don't even take it for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I honor your holy name. Be thou exalted, glorious Savior. Be thou magnified. Be thou adored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just want you to come before the Lord and begin to minister the blood of Jesus to your spirit, man. Say, Lord, I minister the blood of Jesus to my soul, to my spirit, to my body. I minister the blood of Jesus to my dream space. I minister the blood of Jesus on my husband, on his spirit man, his soul, his body. I minister the blood of Jesus to his thoughts, imaginations, in the name of Jesus, to his decision making. I plead the blood of Jesus on my children, their growth, their development. I plead the blood of Jesus on their yesterday, on their today, in their tomorrow. I plead the blood of Jesus in my marriage, in my home. I plead the blood of Jesus over my my family, I plead the blood of Jesus. I begin to disallow. I want you to listen to this prayer point. The Bible said that whatever you allow, whatever you permit on earth shall be permitted. Whatever you disallow shall be disallowed. I want you to say, Lord, I disallow the activities of unclean spirit in my life. I disallow the activity of unclean spirit in the life of my husband. I disallow the activities of unclean spirit in the lives of my children. You are a gatekeeper. Lord, I disallow the activities of unclean spirit in the life of my husband. I disallow the activity of unclean spirit in the life of my family. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that it is the counsel and the purpose of heaven that shall stand. I disallow, begin to disallow. Say, Lord, I disallow the influence of unclean spirits. I disallow the power of darkness. I disallow lies. Every lie that I have believed, every limiting belief that I have have believed every lie that my husband has believed every lie my children are believing about their identity about our identity about who we are in christ about the purpose of God for our lives. Hey, everywhere we have consistently sabotaged ourselves with our words, even the words we speak, we spoke over our own body, looking at our body and speaking negative words over our bodies because of our minds. Today, I plead the blood of Jesus and I begin to neutralize and I silence and I quench the fiery darts of the wicked one cast at me as spells, cast at my husband as spells, cast on my children as spells. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I prevail over every lie that the enemy has told me. Every lie that my husband has believed, every lie my children have believed, the lies that we are even passing down, generational lies, the lies that the enemy has told us, and we are passing it down to our children and making it to become their beliefs. Today, I plead the blood of Jesus and I dismantle those lies in the name of Jesus. I dismantle those lies. I dismantle the lies of the wicked one. I dismantle the lies of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I put a stop all the stumbling blocks that has come on our way as a result of our mindset, negative mindset, negative thinking. Today, I plead the blood of Jesus and I begin to neutralize the lies everywhere that we have been open to the voices of demons, demons that tell us negative things about ourselves. In the name of Jesus, let there be a healing on our inner child. Everywhere my inner child is wounded and broken. Everywhere the inner child of my husband is wounded and broken, shattered and battered. I plead the blood of Jesus. I pray for healing. I plead the blood of Jesus. For healing in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. 
I plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, I cry out to you for mercy. Let mercy prevail, O God. In the name of Jesus, let the mercy of God prevail. Let the mercy of God prevail. Can we begin to say, Lord, everywhere that I have believed the lie of the enemy, I repent. Everywhere my husband has believed the eye of the lie of the enemy, he repents. I repent on the behalf of my home, on the behalf of my household. Everywhere we have embraced lies rather than embracing Jesus who is the truth. Hey, Jesus said I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Everywhere we left the way of Christ and we began to embrace the way of Adam, the way of Jezebel, the way of Babylon. Today, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Hey, everywhere we have allowed our children to pass through the fire in service and worship of Molech, I plead the blood of Jesus. Everywhere in a bid to look like others, to fit into society we have derailed from what god has said to us i plead the blood of jesus 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 i undo the works of wickedness i undo the lies of the wicked one I undo the forces of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. I undo the works of hell in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are a gatekeeper. Do you know that you can speak a word over your home? You have the legal right and it will stand. If the enemy is afflicting you or your family members, he is walking on an illegal ground. And it is because you permitted him. In the book of, on the book of a Psalms chapter 40, verse 4. We're going to literally lift this verse up and pray it. Psalm 44. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Let me tell you a story. There was a man many years ago called Jerry. And Jerry, every weekend, every time, Jerry is in jail. If, if, they, if he comes out of jail, the next weekend, Jerry will go back to jail. If he comes back from jail, next weekend, Jerry will go back to jail. Until one man looked at him, one of the officers in jail, he said, Jerry, you are too young to be doing this thing with your life. There's so much more to you than this thing you are doing. So you know what's going to happen? I'm going to introduce you to a man. And then he introduced him to a man. He said, this man that he introduced him to, he said the man's size is larger than life. Very massive frame. In fact, his frame is very intimidating. And that's one. Number two, the man was, he, he is an ex-footballer. So, you know, American football, how they used to be very big. The ones that are very big, he used to be very big. So, there's a way he carried his, himself. Whenever he, whenever he comes into a room, he's usually very intimidating. Now, this man brought, in fact, when he, this man came and bailed him, bailed him from the prison and told him, come into my car. So, took him from the prison into his car. And for the next one hour, the man made him to memorize his telephone number. So for one hour, he kept cramming until he crammed his telephone number successfully. And the man told him, whenever you get into trouble, because I, I can guarantee that you will call me. I want you to know that I'm here for you. I will support you. I will defend you. And he's like, why will you do that for me, a total stranger? You don't even know me. And the only thing you know about me is that I'm, I'm in and out of the prison. He said, when I look at you, there's something about you. Now, um, of course, the guy is used to nobody looking out for him. So he just did crap again. And that man came and told him, look, there's more to your life than this. Cut long story short, a time came. He slept in, of course, he was homeless. He slept in a car. And then he just woke up in the morning, came out of the car. Before he could even see clearly, some policemen just, you know, they just caught him and then they beat his body against on the floor. And then they put his hands behind and cuffed him. And he was like, what did I do? They said, oh, you sprayed our car in the night. He's like, I'm just waking up. I don't even know what, what was sprayed. What call? Like, I'm just waking up. They didn't even listen to him. They started beating him up. The policemen. So, he was like, I don't want to go to jail when I didn't do anything wrong. He said, call. He said, calling that man's name. He said, call this person. Call this person. Call this person. They're like, what's his number? One person, one policeman said, what's his number? He gave them, he just rattled the man's telephone number off and they called the man. They put the phone on speaker and he was like, the police people have me and I didn't do anything wrong. The man said, where are you? Told him. This was like 5 a.m. early in the morning. This man drove down to that place because he has a very big frame. As soon as he came, the police people saw him and they kind of relaxed like, 
are you coming for him? He's like, yes, this guy is, I, he's, I'm his guardian. What did he do? The police people told him what he did, that he sprayed all their vehicles with spray. And then the man listened to the policeman and the man asked him, what happened? He was like, I don't even know what they're talking about. I slept in this car. I just came out of the car and they just started beating me. The man now looked at them and said, okay, policeman, look at this. The car he slept in was also sprayed. Don't you think that's very dumb that he will spray the car he slept in? Besides, this, the paint on his own car is still very fresh. How can you be inside the car and be spraying around the car? I mean, when you're not an invisible person. It, it made sense to the police people and they were like, okay. Anyway, he told them to handcuff him and he took him home. See, from that day, the boy said, ah, this man really, this man looks out for me. This man is interested in me. From that day, whatever the man said to him, if the man said jump, his question is how high, but the man never told him to do anything wrong. The man just kept challenging him, pushing him forward. And the man, actually, the man wrote this book I'm telling you about. And the man is a doctor today. He has a, bob, he has a boarding career and he has his wife and his children. He has a family. And he said, if that man did not take his stick on him, Look at the verse. The verse that made me tell you this story. Psalm 44. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. You want to pray for your husband? Hmm? It is because of your husband I told you all this story. You want to pray this verse 4 on him. May, there are many men that have a lot of self-doubt. But who will they tell? A lot of them are sabotaging themselves either by what they say or how they were brought up, it just double sabotage. You want to pray for your husband because he's the head of your home. You want to say, Lord, Psalm 40, if you have your Bible, just turn your Bible to Psalm 44. If you don't have your Bible, listen to what I'm saying and repeat it over your husband. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. You will now put your husband's name. You say, Father, blessed is my husband because my husband makes the Lord his trust. My husband does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Look, this issue of lies is a story for another day. There are, including we women, but let us have it our husband first. You will say, everywhere my husband has believed a lie about himself, about God, about family, because of how he was brought up, because of orientation, because of whatever it is, Lord, my husband will not turn aside to lies. My husband makes the Lord his trust in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God. Just like this story, that just like the story I told you now, that God, you cannot tell me that is a coincidence. I don't even believe that. God brought that man into this young man's life to mold him. You will say, Lord, begin to order the footsteps of my husband in the name of Jesus. Order his footsteps. Remove far from him men and women that do not add any value to his life and destiny in the name of Jesus. And he will not be one who will sabotage his own self. Holy Spirit of God, breathe upon him in the name of Jesus. Father, breathe upon him. Father, breathe upon him in the name of Jesus. Lord, breathe upon my husband. Breathe upon him, Heavenly Father. Breathe upon him in the name of Jesus. I begin to speak over him that my husband is a man that makes the Lord his trust. He makes the Lord his trust. He does not make man his trust. He does not even trust in himself. He trusts in God in the name of Jesus Christ. His trust is in God. His decisions and his choices show that his trust is in God. In his relationships, his trust trust is in God. Holy Spirit of God, I begin to speak over my husband. According to Psalms chapter 40 verse 4, the Bible says, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. My husband makes the Lord his trust. In this season of his life, the Lord navigates his path. The Lord brings him into total alignment. Oh my God. The Lord brings my husband into alignment. Alignment and a configuration according to the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord aligns him in his relationships, in his identity, identity about himself. In the people that are meant to be in his path, the men that are supposed to groom him and breathe on him, the men he's supposed to breathe on and groom, in the name of Jesus, their paths begin to cross. Their paths begin to cross. I begin to awaken such relationships in his life. The, the relationship of a mentor and mentee, the relationship of his coaches, the relationship of his advisors, 
the relationship of godly men and godly women that God brings into his path to align him to divine order, to align him to the purpose of God for family, for career, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, I begin to declare and I speak over him that he's not him. He's a man that does not respect the proud. He's a man that is not turned aside to lies. In the name of Jesus, my husband is not turned aside to lies. He's not turned aside to falsehood. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's not turned aside side to lies, lies about his identity, lies about his finance, lies about God. Oh, God doesn't care about me. Oh, all kind of lies. Today, I begin to tear down every lie that he has believed about himself, every lie he has believed about marriage, every lie he has believed about child rearing, every lie he has believed about his identity. Today, I pull it down and I begin to establish the truth of God's word. I establish the counsel of heaven. I establish the purpose of the Lord over his life, over his mind, over his finance, over his relationship, over every department of his life. In the name of Jesus, I begin to declare that he comes into alignment. 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 Comes into alignment. In the name of Jesus, today I begin to speak over the life of my husband by the mercies of Jehovah, by the blood of Jesus. He comes into alignment. He comes out of every cage, every prison, everywhere he has been caged, everywhere he has been locked up, everywhere he has been silenced. Today, I begin to declare that the chains are broken. 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 In the name of Jesus, the chains are broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the same Isaiah chapter, sorry, Psalm 40 verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou did not desire. My ears hast thou opened. You want to say, Lord, open his ears. Open my own ears. Open the ears of my children. Samuel, as a child, heard the voice of God. And he said, here I am. When God called him. You want to say, Lord. Open my ears. This verse says, sacrifice and offering thou did not desire. Father, open my ears. What God asks is that the ears be opened. It's not about sacrifice or offerings. Because it's possible that somebody is sacrificing, is you know, giving offerings. And these things, some of them, the Bible called them the sacrifice of fools. Because it is not from a heart that is right. We want to say, Lord, as you bring my husband into alignment, open his ears to hear your instruction. To hear your voice. Open my own ears. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God, open my ears. Open my ears. Open the ears of my husband. And open the ears of my children, open the ears of my siblings, open the ears of their spouses and their children, open the ears of my father, open our ears, O oh God, open our ears, O oh God, open our ears to hear you so that we will not offer the sacrifice of fools, so that we will not offer sacrifices that is unacceptable before you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to be led by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we don't want to be led in the flesh, we want to be led by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You see, sacrifice and offering that did not desire. Let me say something to you. You know that yesterday the eclipse of the sun and the moon happened, right? The, there was a fusion of the sun and the moon yesterday. In case you did not know, I'm giving you as news now. It happened yesterday. I was speaking to my sisters yesterday and when we are sharing, you know, many people, many believers were not some were either unaware of it or if they were aware of it, it meant nothing to them. However, we must know this, that in this month of April, you know, some people are doing certain kind of fast. And in this season, they're kind of rounding up the fast. And they're not just rounding up the fast, you know, just round up the fast. They are dealing with a lot of enchantment and demonic activities going on. Plus, the stargazers and the astrologers that understand the mystery of the sun and the moon. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 91. The sun shall not smite you by day. You think it's just English Bible is speaking. No. He said the sun because there are people who know how to manipulate and conjure the sun to smite certain people. 
He said the moon will not smite you by night because there are stargazers and astrologers and people that understand the mystery of witchcraft and wickedness that know how to manipulate these things. So I want you to speak the word of God in the book of Psalms chapter 91. We're going to be praying Psalm 91, the prayer of protection to protect us over in this season, in this month of April and in this season. Do you know that the eclipse that took place yesterday, the next one that will happen just like it happened yesterday, will take place in 2078. Calculate 2024. Calculate up to 2078. Do you know that probably more than 50% of people or 40% of people on earth would have really died by that time? Because this 20, what's 24? 34, 44, 54, 64, 74. That's more than 50 years later. What is your age now? Add 52 years to your age now. You'll be like, oh my God. You're going to be older than how you are now. A lot of things would have happened. I want you to pray Psalms 91. And we're going to be praying that verse over our family. Over our family. We're going to be praying this verse over our family. The Bible says in Psalm 91. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I want to get to the verse that says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night okay so I want you to pray Uh -huh. I want you to pray verse, verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. He said, A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but they shall not come nigh me. I want you to begin to pray the spirit of protection over you, over your husband, over your children, over your family, over your loved ones, over the work of your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this season, I begin to declare. Look at verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Begin to declare it. Father, I declare that the Lord God is my refuge and my fortress. The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. The Lord is the refuge and the fortress of my husband, of my children, of my home. In the name of Jesus Christ, everywhere the enemy is tearing up strife, everywhere the enemy is tearing up division, confusion, in the name of Jesus Christ today, I declare that it is cancelled, it is annulled. I begin to breathe the breath of Christ over my life, over my health, over my husband's life, over his health, over my children's life, over their health, over our relationships, over our marriages, over our homes, over my siblings, over their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord cover us with his feathers. In the name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray verse 4 and say in the name of Jesus, the Lord cover us with his feathers. The Lord Jesus cover us with his feathers. The Lord Jesus covers us with his feathers and under his wings we trust. In the name of Jesus, the Lord cover us with his feathers. In the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus cover us with his feathers. The Lord Jesus cover us with his feathers. The Lord Jesus covers us with his feathers. The Lord Jesus cover us with his feathers. In the name of Jesus, can you begin to speak verse 5 and say, O oh Lord, the sun, that I shall not be afraid for the terror by night. I shall not be afraid for the arrow that flies by day. Father, any wickedness that was conjured over the atmosphere, over the sons of men, over the earth realm, over children of God, yesterday day by stargazers, by astrologers. In the name of Jesus, I silence and I annul it. In the name of Jesus, every wickedness released into the atmosphere against people of God, against the children of God, against innocent men and women, to afflict them with diseases and plagues, to afflict them with, with lack, to afflict their finances and to cause them to stumble, to cause them to, uh, to, to, to begin to experience all kind of misfortune and calamity. Today, I cancel it. I acknowledge it. I declare that I am exempt. My husband is exempt. My children are exempt. Our home, our marriages, our finance, all that has to do with us, my siblings, their spouses and children. Oh, the work of our hands. We are exempt from wickedness. We are exempt from evil. We are exempt from hell. We are exempt from the power of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible said that we shall not be afraid for the terror by night. In the name of Jesus, we shall not be afraid for the arrow that flies by day. Every arrow that flies by day 
day that has been positioned against us, today I declare that it is cancelled. Every wickedness positioned against our bodies uh, as sickness and disease, uh, positioned against our breathing, positioned against our minds as mental disorder, positioned against our minds as depression, uh, as fear, as doubt, to doubt, I cancel them. I declare that it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to begin to speak speed. I sense in my heart that we need to begin to speak speed. Say, Lord, I speak speed. I speak speed. I speak speed to the work of my hands. I speak speed. This is the month of April. I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy and I speak speed. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak the peace of God. I speak the peace of God. Every form of delay, de every delay, delay from hell, every delay, karasukapata. I cancel you, I cancel delay, demonic delay, satanic delay, rakata bada, yakalabada, shakabasi, keteleba, debokombelate, rosofepe candila badianana, jindome la coparasi le tekeda, rotope la keve sitopeka, inamalaka ya. The sun shall not smite us by day to day. I cancel all the delays, 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 delay in immigration, delay in favor, delay in mercy, every form of delay, delay that we are misinterpreting and thinking it is normal today. I cancel every demonic induced delay, every satanic delay, rakapata shata to slow us down to limit us everywhere that our glory has been hijacked in the atmosphere in the realm of the spirit I speak a release I speak a release I speak a release I begin to open the windows of heaven the windows of favor the windows of favor can you say Lord everywhere I'm a prisoner I come out of every prison. Everywhere I've been locked up. Everywhere my husband has been locked up. Everywhere our glory has been locked up. Everywhere my children are locked up. I begin to declare. I begin to declare right now that it is broken. It is broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. Ratapaya. Likesute palite na shakabalada. Rada sikopela dene mano sukombelate. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. In the name of Jesus, the chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. In the name of Jesus, the chains are broken by the Spirit of the Living God. The chains are broken. In the name of Jesus, the chains are broken. The chains are broken. Hey, rasa kapala kaya kabasi kete leke te kete peka si kete kabaka yakata la kabada shakabaka si kete. The chains are broken everywhere I am chained. Everywhere my husband is chained. Everywhere my marriage is chained. Everywhere my children are chained. Everywhere my siblings are chained. The chain is broken. Ancient chains. Ancient prison doors. In this month of April, we move forward. We move forward. We move forward. We move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey! Rasakapali kete bedali tope namasi kayatali dabasha randama sikonde lemene sikonde galadaya in Jesus' name we pray amen i want us to pray for our children our children second corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ we're going to be praying this verse over our children we're going to be saying lord shine your light in you mention your children's name shine your light in you mention your children's name shine your light in you mention your child's name in his heart in her heart 
to give the light of the knowledge of your glory displayed in the face of Christ. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, shine your light in the life of my daughters, in the life of Trinity, Tiffany, Terry. Shine your light. Shine your light in their hearts, O oh God. Shine your light, the light of salvation, the light of their true identity in Christ. Uh, shine the light. Shine your light. Shine your light, the light of your love uh, in the name of Jesus. And let it give light. Let it give light. Let it give knowledge. Let it give the glory of God. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Expel the darkness that this generation is encroaching in the hearts of innocent men and women, in the hearts and, and the lives of children. Oh Lord, shine your light. Shine your light. Shine your light in my children's hearts. In the name of Jesus, I want you to say, Oh God, I possess the faith that prevails. My husband possess the faith that prevails. My children possess the faith that prevails. By this faith, we walk into our inheritance. By this faith, we possess our inheritance. By this faith, we possess our heritage. We walk into our heritage. We walk into our inheritance. In the name of Jesus, by this faith, we are healed. Healed from sickness and disease. By this faith, we erase and we cancel untimely death. I shall not die untimely. I will not be cut short. My husband, my children, we shall not be cut short. I will not lose any member of my family. We shall not die. In this month of April, we cancel strife from our homes. We cancel disagreements. We cancel conflict. We plead the blood of Jesus and we begin to declare, let the love of Christ shine in our hearts. Let the love of Christ shine in our homes. In the name of Jesus, we receive divine speed, divine speed, divine speed. Sute malide na mashanda ya rabako si leveni rakapaka ya kasi kele debe do shedelene in sita in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that the love of Christ the love of Christ hey is shed abroad in my heart the love of Christ is shed abroad in the heart of my husband the love of Christ is shed abroad in the heart and the lives of my children hey irakasata can you pray that prayer of speed one more time and then we'll be done. I just feel like we should address that issue of speed one more time. Every form of delay, every form of delay, every form of delay, demonic delay, satanic delay, foundational delay, recorsete, limitations, be broken, be broken, diseases, hey, demonic sponsored diseases uh, that were that was planted in the dream space uh, that was planted in the night when we slept uh, be uprooted be uprooted be uprooted my body is the temple of the holy ghost uh, every arrow every arrow arrow of sickness and disease uh, Kelede Yalada Bacos in the Levene Meno Combelane Rakas in Temena Shindolene Macasicata Yacabacalitata. O Lord arise, O Lord arise, O Lord arise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you just give God thanks and say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I'm grateful unto you. I'm grateful unto you. I'm grateful unto you. I'm grateful unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Spirit of Truth. Thank you, Ebenezer. Thank you, Man of War. Thank you, El Shaddai. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the honor and the adoration. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying along with us. Tomorrow we go again. We pray for our families and our homes. Mm -hmm. Do well to share this video, like this video, share it to women who need to pray for their homes. Sometimes, as women, you need if you're looking for ginger to pray, I promise you we have all the ginger you need to pray. We pray together, we will win together, and God will give us testimonies and victories in our homes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Bye.